I'm Ian Sanders, author of Juggle, Rethink Work, Reclaim Your Life. And for the latest in the series of the Juggle Tapes interviews, I'm here to meet Chris Barris brown Chris is director of What If, the innovation company, an organisation that helps clients innovate and develop. They've got an impressive client list from major brands through to government departments and even a country. And they're based in China, the USA and here in London. At What If, Chris juggles multiple projects, multiple brands and multiple time zones. Plus, he's a writer, a motivational speaker and he even practices Reiki. Let's go and check him out. So here I am with Chris Barris brown Thanks for joining me, Chris, this morning. It's good to be spending time with you. You're a director of What If, the innovation company. Tell me a bit more about what you actually do at What If. I know you've got quite a broad role. You travel around the world for them and work across probably all their brands. But um, what's, you know, what, what's, it say on the, what's it say on the business card? We're, we're an innovation business. Um, and I used to say that's all we do. But innovation can be so many different things these days. Uh, it used to be new products. So we did things like Taste the Difference from Sainsbury's. We've, we've done all sorts of beers and pizzas and all that kind of stuff. We soon realised if you can have ideas on, on products, you can have ideas on everything. So you know, we've helped reform the high court process, we've helped turn around the EasyJet's planes faster, all sorts of things. My bit of the business takes all that experience over thousands of innovation projects and, and helps our clients learn from it so that their own innovation capability improves themselves. So right. I, I work with clients like um, Coca-Cola, HSBC, Johnson Johnson, Nike, and help them get better at delivering innovation. I looked at your biog. You've got, had quite a kind of, kind of quite an interesting, quite a kind of varied background. What was the catalyst for for, for coming into what if? Um, good question. I um, I think I did what most people do, which is you kind of you, you do all your qualifications, your A levels. You get your degree, you get your first job, then you get your first job that actually you want, then the first job you're good at, and then I found myself thinking. Um, that I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. It, it felt like I was, I was on the hamster wheel. So I went to my, my HR director, I remember it quite well, um, and, and said, look, I don't know what I want to do, but I, I can't keep doing this. And they were like, well, look, I was running Carling Black Labour at the time, and they were like, well, you know, you've got one of the best brands in the country, you're on the fast track programme, we've done an MBA for you, you must be nuts. <laughs> um, so I ended up having to throw my job in, and, and I went travelling right. uh, to work out what I wanted to do. And that's when I got into personal development, creativity, NLP, all this kind of stuff. And I fell in love with specifically creativity because I, I realised that I needed that to come up with my own inspiring possibilities. Then I came back uh, to the UK and I was teaching Reiki and I was doing my own marketing consultancy. And I found What If and they said I could do those two things on the same day. But part of the, part of the kind, of kind of spirit of Juggle and, 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 and the book I've written is about, you know, kind of breaking the rules in business. Forget the myths about what you should and shouldn't do and, and encouraging the whole kind of thing about plurality, yeah? Right. Because I think so much of, um, you know, like you were saying in terms of, you know, when you're working for a company, working for a corporation, and you're going through the education system, planning what you're going to do. The focus is always very singular. You know, what are you going to do? And it's about one thing. Sure. How do you find for the, for the organisation at large, for what if, you know, the guys outside, you know, are they, are they kind of allowed to embrace this kind of plurality as well? Or, um, how, you know, how does that work? One thing that we do is obviously make sure that people have a wide variety of, of clients. So although they're doing innovation, you know, one day they could be inventing a new drug for AstraZeneca, and, and the, week, the week after that they could be working on you know, raising money for a big charity. Mm -hmm. So that in itself, I think, gives you a, a broader range of experience and, and keeps you stimulated. We do um, have very flexible contracts here. We, we've got lots of people who've got, you know, they work three, four days a week, so they can do other things. And we encourage people to always have fresh experiences in, in the business anyway. So we move people around quite a lot. We give them lots of variety of experience. We, um, we, we have a, a, something called a freshness budget. And a freshness budget is money that you can use to do something you've never done before. So although it might not be a job, it is something that keeps you, you know, topped up as far as stimulus is concerned and seeing the world in, in, in new, fresh ways. Wow. So I guess a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and obviously, in that sense, you know, what if is, is you know, quite pioneering. I mean, and I know there's other agencies out there like, you know, St. Luke's and people that yeah. did that whole thing. But do you think, I mean, you know, the world of work and the world of business is changing. You think this is, you know, a lot of other organisations are going to, you know, follow what you're doing here in terms of having that flexibility? I think, I think naturally, you know, the, the whole employment market has changed so, so dramatically. You know, people aren't in jobs for very long now. And, you know, we're still not job hopping as much in the UK as, as some countries, but you don't expect to be around for so long. And, and if you can do anything to harness your talent and give them the opportunities that they're, they're really after, then you've got more chance to get the best people in. So you have to do that. 
And for me, also, as I was saying, if you don't have stimulated people who just do the same thing the whole time, how are you going to have an innovation business that's having breakthrough ideas? You need, sure. You've got to do that. You've got to do that. And that's the challenge for you as a business, because, yeah, that's your, that's, your, that's your currency. Exactly. And how do, you, how do you find that personally? Because, I mean, I know you've, you've written a book on how to have kick-ass ideas, and, yeah. you know, creativity and creative thinking is really at the heart of your DNA. Sure. Bearing in mind being a director of this business and everything else you're doing, how do you actually find time personally for that creativity and that creative thinking for the organisation and for your, for your clients as well? Yeah. Because freshness is one of our values, I have to do it as well as everyone else and I have to role model it and make sure you know, it, it is going on. So, um, so we're always trying new and different things and, uh, and I have to do that quite visibly. Um, I have a lot of playing time where, where I, I spend most of that time not you know, going through reports, doing all the work and analysis that you have to do as a director. I, I like to get all that done before we take off. And then when I'm on there, you know, it's, it's films, it's music, it's, it's flicking through books and magazines. My carry-on luggage is always like over the limit because I, I carry so much stimulus with me. No, that's really smart. And in fact, I was reading, you know, one of the reasons I'm sitting here with you now is because I was reading your column in, um, in, in British Airways Business Life magazine. Um, but n n notwithstanding that, obviously, you, you, have, you have quite a demanding schedule. You know, however much time you try and put those buffers in and all the rest of it, you know, at the end of the day, you've got, you've got you know, you've just come back from China. You yeah. did a lot of, you had a, quite a schedule there of a lot of presentations yeah, in a sports yeah. space of time. Yeah. And I'm sure you've got how much you try and manage it to get it on the right side of saying you've got the you've got the conference calls and all those kind of things. Sure. How, how do you find that that kind of day-to-day -day juggle what, what are the tactics there you know for kind of keeping all the balls in the air do you try and kind of segment things neatly or have different days for doing different kind of stuff you know what do you mm, I've tried that I, I, it doesn't work as, as, as neatly for me so I've, I suppose I've got a few principles Num number one is I think I've probably got enough time to do a third of what I need to do right I can then delegate another third and then a third, I just upset people. So I choose very carefully who I upset and how I upset them because there's going to be some people disappointed they don't get. Are they some, and, and they're sometimes clients, presumably. They, they, can, they can very much be clients, yeah. yeah, yeah. They can't do all the work that we need, we need to do sometimes. Yeah. That certainly happens. We tend to attract clients that have the same value systems as us. So they, they tend to be pretty good at understanding if we've got some things that we need to do. Um, and the, the ones that say, hey, we need this by tomorrow, pull an all-nighter, don't tend to be the people that we tend to hang out with. We talked about segmentation, you know, kind of family neatly segmented, like after seven o'clock at night and yeah. weekends or... <laughs> yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Life is dynamic, so you're never in balance. You're, you're either moving towards it or you're moving away from it. And, and the moment that happens, we're never even conscious. I realised a long time ago, I can't do a hundred things well. I'm much better at doing, you know, three things that are really important to our life and our success. And, and focusing all my time and attention on that. I also am very clear about what I'm good at and what I'm not. And I've got a team of people around me who, who pick up the pieces and, right. and bring skills that I, I'm not very good at doing. I think I know the answer, but I want to, I want to ask you anyway. Um, you've had quite a mixed up kind of portfolio to get to here. Has there, has there ever been a kind of a, a career plan there or have you just kind of made it up as you, as you went along? <laughs> career plan. I like, I like the concept. Um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've, I've, I've definitely developed career plans that they haven't lasted very long. No. Because, I, I, again, you know, life is so dynamic that, you know, things change so much. Mm. You change and develop. Mm. So, so I, I could never predict what I've done. Um, and, and I'm grateful, actually, mm. that I couldn't because it would be a bit boring. If Absolutely. That was the case. So my belief is always get really tuned up about what it is you're after. And it might not be, you know, the precise execution of that, but, you know, the, the, the feeling of it. Um, get yourself in a good sensitized state and just feel the opportunities around you. And I think as long as you're awake enough to those, then that they, they tend to come. Mm. The people I find who find it very hard to develop their careers, they spend their life al almost in a robotic kind of trance where they do the same thing day in, day out. They're not thinking about what the opportunities are around them. And even if they're getting hit in the face with them, they, they would probably ignore them. So mm. um, I, I'm a believer of send out the intention and then just see what happens. And it's, it's always meant that I've, I've met extraordinary people and had a great time. What about what if and that kind of corporate yeah. development? You know, how, do you, how, do you, how do you reconcile the free thinking with the corporate needs? Yeah, because you do need some commercial rigour. There's no doubt about it. But I mean, we're, we're very fortunate because we, we, we own ourselves. So um, being independent means that we don't have to do endless reporting to financial institutions. Obviously, we've got to keep the bank happy. Mm. But you know, they don't want a, a five-year plan. They want to know what's happening this year. Mm. Um, we did do a lot of projecting into the future for a while because we wanted to kind of get a sense for where we were going. 
But if we look at those projections and where we're at, I mean, it's a different world. It's, sure, it's just a different world. So, so we soon realised that actually it's a pretty pointless exercise. Apart from having a bit of a dream together. There's mm. nothing wrong with a dream. But mm. just remember that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're still waiting to see what this looks like. But we won um, a contract with the, the, the Saudi government to make them a more innovative country by 2020. You know? wow. I mean, that's a big project. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, we, we could only really pitch for the first two years of trying to work out how you tackle it. Um, but um, you know, if, if if that takes the momentum that it could take, you know, this this business changes. Mm. So um, you, you've got to be fleet of foot. Mm. You know, you've, you've got to be pretty flexible about the way you approach your business. And then I think um, you know, life stays exciting. No, yeah, sure. So it sounds like we've got an organisation of jugglers here. Yeah, you've got to be. Yeah, if yeah. you innovate, you've got to juggle. Absolutely, yeah. Chris. Thanks a lot. Absolutely, cheers. Pleasure. Great, cheers, thank yeah. you.